Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got another box from the folks at Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box 104, and the name is Engage. Let's get this on the bench and see what we have inside here. It looks like here we've got a surface mount 3xAA battery holder. I think this goes with the robot badge kit. This looks like a bag of various components. I see some capacitors, resistors, LEDs, some switches, some coin cell battery holders. Looks like the type of connectors for SAOs. So this must be a bunch of stuff for SAO kits. Looks like a lot of things in this bag. Let's see what we have in here first. This looks like the ESP32 C3 Super Mini development board. I believe this is going to be the brains for the robot badge kit. Here we've got some CR2032 coin cell batteries. I believe this is the DC DC boost converter for the alien robot badge kit. Here we've got the Node MCU ESP8266 OLED development board. Cool little ESP board there with a built-in display. Pretty nice. And here I think is the first time we get to see some of these nice full-color PCBs. This is the freaking Clowns SAO supplemental add-on, or, you know, another way to say that if you want. This is the tie-dyed Bithead SAO PCB. And this is the All Your Base SAO PCB. looks pretty cool. I love these full color PCBs. They look really great. This looks like the two 4x4 LED modules that we have for our Alien Robot badge kit. These are RGB LEDs that are WS2812B. This looks like the nylon braided camouflage USB-C cable. This looks like the exclusive Engage themed Hackerbox lanyard. Pretty darn nice there. And this is the Mystery High Roller Con Quacked Out SAO. This was pretty cool because you had a chance of getting one of six different designs in your hacker box. And I've got this red one here that says Bleed Out. This whole High Roller Con thing got my attention. I think I remember hearing about it before, but didn't really look into it too much because, you know, I wasn't out there. I actually ended up getting in touch with a couple of the guys from the group that puts this on. And I was going to stick an interview with them in here, but it ended up being too long. So I'm going to put a link in the description and possibly a link right here so you can find out what High Roller Con is all about. This is the red insulated 22 gauge wire we'll be using for the Alien Robot Badge Kit. And this is the exclusive Badge Life sticker sheet. Hey, I recognize that one sticker there. And this is another pretty full color PCB. This is the Galactic Power Badge Kit. Ah, oh, check it out. The back looks so cool there too. And this has a place to put an SAO on the front as well. I usually say last but not least for these, but that's not the case this time. And this is our Hackerbox 104 collectible reference card. Now I get to say last but not least, but this time it's for this very cool full color PCB that's for the Alien Robot Badge Kit. Check that out. I'm really digging this. What a great looking PCB. Very cool. Nice job, folks. Before we move on, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, PCB Way. Join in on the celebration of PCB Way's 10th anniversary. For a decade, PCB Way has been your trusted partner for top quality PCB services. Now, enjoy incredible discounts, special offers, and exciting giveaways. Don't miss this chance to be part of the festivities. Check out the link in the description and celebrate with us today. And thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring today's video. Remember the early summer hacker box from last year, number 93, Badge Life? Well, the vibe is back with Hacker Box 104, bringing those heavy hacker summer camp fills. This box gives a nod to the Badge Life community. 
If you're not familiar with Badge Life, I've linked the documentary in the description below. It's a bit older now, but still offers a great introduction. Badges and SAOs are a fantastic way to blend artistic and technical creativity. Some badges focus on aesthetics, while others emphasize hackability, and some do both. You'll typically find many of these at conferences like DEF CON. And speaking of DEF CON, I'm thrilled to share that I'm finally attending DEF CON this summer. It's been on my bucket list since high school, but for various reasons, I've never managed to make it. If you're heading to DEF CON this year, come visit the Hacker Boxes booth in the vendor area. Say hi to me and Joe. We'll be there, surrounded by the awesomeness that is DEF CON. We'll have badges and SAOs from this box, along with a bunch of other incredible stuff, including some DEF CON exclusives. If you need any help with soldering or tinkering, give me a shout. I'd love to lend a hand whenever possible. See you at DEF CON and High Roller Con too. Just like they always do, the folks from Hacker Boxes have included a great set of instructions here available on Instructables. I have a link to that in the description. But even if you don't have the Hacker Box, you might find it pretty handy. All right, the first thing the Instructable tells us to do is just basically hook up this ESP32 and make sure that the power light comes on. It's not supposed to do anything else, just a first basic test here, and that looks good. Next, we're instructed to get into Arduino and go to the board manager and search for ESP32 and install that board support. But you can see right here, I already have that installed, so I didn't need to do that. Next, we're told to go to Tools, Board, ESP32, and select the No Logo ESP32 C3 Super Mini Board. And then we're to open the example Blink Sketch and push that to the device. Don't forget to set your serial port to match the device that you plugged in, or you may have trouble pushing the code. After pushing the code to the device, it should be blinking its GPIO pin 8, which should make a blue LED blink. And as you can see here, it looks like that's working. Set aside the pins that came with it, we'll be using them later. Next, we're going to be prepping the leads for our LEDs that go on the Alien Robot Badge. This is a set of knockoff strippers I've got here, but I really like these. And I like them because you can see that little red piece, you can kind of set your depth that you want there. And I don't know if that's one centimeter, like the thing says to do, but that seemed about right to me. And so that's what I went with. It's not always perfect, but it's relatively consistent as you'll see here. So I stripped the first piece and then I got ready to solder it and put a little pad of solder down on the first one I was gonna do. I figured it would also be pretty smart to go ahead and just put solder on the pads of the other one. So I went ahead and did them all. Next, I just repeated the process of soldering, cutting, stripping, soldering, cutting, stripping until they were all done. I thought this part of the instructor was kind of funny where it said the eight leads make it look like a weird square cat, but I guess it's not too far off. Meow, 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 meow. Okay, next it was time to do some special bends on all these leads and then get these LEDs onto the badge board and solder them in place. But as you can see here, I did not do that and made a big old goof. The first of many goofs while recording this hacker box. You can see I've already got one solder down and I'm getting ready to do the other and I didn't show you about bending these leads. So what I'm gonna do here is borrow one of the SAOs and just give you a quick visual of how that's done. So basically you solder the lead on then you want to bend that lead like at a 90 degree angle like straight down the edge of the led pcb and then as best you can then you want to bend it again at another 90 to the outside direction so it will lay flat across the pads on the badge board you don't have to worry about the leads being perfect you can trim those later as you'll see when you get them all bent now i'll show you how the real thing looks when you do it as you place this down, and especially before you solder things in place, you want to make sure that your data in and data out on the LED module matches the markings on the PCB. Then it's a good time to kind of eyeball your excess leads and kind of figure out how much you need to trim off of each one to make them pretty close and not extend past the pad too much. Then I just soldered everything into place. and gave everything a quick look to make sure it was all okay when done. All right, next I soldered on the two buttons and I did that by pre-populating the pads on one side, letting those leads kind of push down and then doing the other side. After that, I did a little cleanup. I went out of order here a little bit and checked out the DC-DC boost controller next. 
and I used a little bit of solder braid to open up both of these jumpers here to be like the legend included in the documentation. Both of those need to be open for this to be in the five volt mode. If you have some real fine leads on your meter, you could use that to make sure that they're open, but they are pretty tiny. All right, next we're gonna use some of those pins we saved earlier from the ESP32. We're gonna break those off into four separate pins. I'm not sure I ended up doing this the best way, but I tried to finagle around the pins inside the plastic, kind of slid things around and got it to where I could uh, solder it in then remove the plastic and finish soldering the other pins and try to get it as flush to the board as possible. Of course, that left some pieces sticking up a bit, so I used my cutters to get those off. Next, I put the buzzer on, paying attention to this dot for the orientation to match what's on the PCB. And I just pre-populated one of the pads with some solder, held that in place, kind of heated that up and let that fall into the pad. And then I just used the normal technique to solder the remaining side. Next, we put the surface mount power source switch on here. And I just pre-populated two diagonal pads first with a little drop of solder on each. And just hold the switch in place and heat each one of those and kind of let the leg fall down into the uh, pad then come back and just use regular solder techniques for the remaining pins and then a little bit more cleaning next i soldered on the esp32 super mini had my tip loaded up with a little bit of solder and just kind of held the thing in place while i did that first joint then I'll go around here and do the opposite diagonal joint. And basically kind of go through from the front on each little castellated area. And then you'll see sometimes after I do that, I'll come back through and then go through the top hole just to kind of make sure that's got plenty of solder for the connection there. Next, I soldered the battery pack into place. And I just did that by loading up these pads and it takes a little bit of solder here. I loaded this first one up with quite a bit. Then I went around and just kind of put a little bit on the remaining pads, kind of giving that a little something for the bottom. Then you can see we put the actual battery pack on here. Then I get it into place and start heating up the tabs again and going around, heating those up. Then I'll come back through and add solder and make sure we have plenty of solder to have a good connection. Next, I uh, put the female SAO header on the front of the PCB. Make sure the keying tap goes up towards the top of the robot's helmet. Flip that over and solder it in place. Now we're gonna get some demo code on here. First, I'm gonna make sure this switch is in the USB position. And then we're gonna plug in the USB-C cable and then move over to our PC. Next, we're instructed to go to the Arduino IDE and use the library manager to find and install the fast LED library by Daniel Garcia. You can see I already have that installed from previous things, so I don't need to install that. And then we're told to grab this HB104 demo INO file and get that over in Arduino and push it over to our board. And this is the fun default state that lights come up in when you power it on and don't press any of the buttons. The top button gives you this pattern along with this sound. Hopefully that's not getting canceled out. And the bottom button gives you this pattern. All right, so now we're going to mess with our Node MCU ESP8266 OLED development board. And the first easy task we have to do here is just power it up with the USB cable. And we should see this hello world. And looks like that's showing up as expected. All right, so the next thing it's going to have you do is install 8266 support inside your Arduino environment if you don't have that already. Now I do have that in mind, but I wanna show you what this looks like. This is a different system than I normally use. So this is an older interface, but it should be basically the same for you. There's a URL you need to grab from the link that's in the Instructable. And you're gonna to go to File Preferences. Then you'll see in there, there's a place that says Additional Board Manager URLs. And that's where you wanna paste that URL that's on that link. Once you do that, you can go back over into Board Manager and install the ESP. 8266 stuff. After that, you want to go to Tools, Board, ESP8266, Node MCU 1.0, ESP12E module. 
Next, you're gonna load up File, Examples, Basics, Blink, and push that to the ESP8266. Since we've been moving back and forth between different modules, it's always a good idea to make sure you've got the right COM port, and then proceed with pushing the code. If all goes well, you should see the blue LED blinking that's next to the Wi-Fi antenna. Next, we're advised to use the Library Manager to find and install the U8G2 library by Oliver. You can see here where the Instructable tells you to then load this OLED Hello sketch. And I totally skipped right by that during my original gathering of footage. So I'm gonna go back here today after the fact as I'm editing this and just show you what this looks like when you put it on the Node MCU module here. It ends up being a nice bit of example code to show you how to interact with the display as well as how to deal with button presses. Next, we're supposed to follow this link in the Instructable to GitHub to grab this Wi-Fi packet monitor sketch. Grab that, open it up in Arduino. Then we're supposed to go find this ESP8266 ESP32 OLED driver for SSD1306, specifically by Thingpult, so make sure you get the right one. Find that, and then hit install, and that gets installed. Then we change these two lines as instructed, and then push the code to the module. And what we end up with is a pretty neat little wireless device that can show us how many packets are flying by us and how many DAUTH packets are flying by us on a given channel in the 2.4 gigahertz section of uh, Wi-Fi. And you press the flash button to change through the channels. Pretty doggone neat. Hey folks, so it's Jamie from the future again. Originally when I recorded this stuff, when I got to that step, that was it, and it was on to the SAOs. But since then, they've had some cool code they've released for these guys to kind of work together, which is really neat. And there's a link in the Instructable. And at this point, I'm not gonna show, you know, opening those up and pushing that code. I think at this point, even if this is your first time, if you've followed along, you see how that works. But the only thing is, once you've like messed around with two different types of microcontrollers, what you want to do is make sure when you're pushing the code, you're in the right, you know, you've got the right card and the right, you know, serial port because it's going to change. Like if I, I use this one cable, right? But when I'm on this guy, it was like 15. And when I was on this guy, it was like 19. So anyway, get the code, get the code for this. that says OLED, put it on this guy, get the new code for the badge under step five and put it on this. And this is what you will end up with. So I'm going to flip this over to battery. I've got my double A's in here now. So this is what it default boots up to, right? Just like that. Then we're going to give some power to this. Now, when we hit flash, let's see if we can trigger something over here. Hey, how about that? Okay, check if we can go through these different modes and stuff like that. Look at that. Pretty cool. So that's kind of neat. And I believe, uh, like it says in the docs, two badges are near each other. They can uh, trigger things as well. Now, one thing to note, I believe it says, if uh, I'm going to turn this back off, if you hold down the up key while turning it on, it's going to put it into like a little attract mode where it's just going to cycle through what it's got. Like, I guess this was what the guy's winking or something. So it's going to just go through some things by itself. So that's some really cool code that they put up after I did my original footage and had been started editing. Very cool. Thanks for the uh, extra code there, hacker boxes. This is really neat. And I can't wait to kind of look through the code to learn how this ESP now, I think that's what it's called. ESP now is the method that this is communicating with. I'm not sure exactly all the details on that, but uh, heck that might even warrant its own video. I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to make sure to show you all this. Sorry for it being kind of off the cuff here, but I wanted to make sure to include it. Thanks. All right, y'all, as I'm editing this, we are fast approaching the 20 minute mark. Not to discount the awesome quality of these SAOs, but I think it's time for an electric power badge and SAO speed run. All right, so here we have the Galactic power badge. It's gonna use the smaller 
clear 3 millimeter LEDs, a 10 ohm resistor that's Mark 100, switch, battery holder, female SAO connector, and needs a CR2032 battery. Let's go. Loading up one of the resistor pads with a little bit of solder on this one side, and dropping one side into that loaded pad, then doing the opposite side. Here adding a little more to the first side, loading up the pads for the battery holder. Don't get carried away and do this metal part, that is for the battery contact. I read some comments where there seemed to be some confusion when it talked about place the short pin near the flat edge. If you look closely there, you can see the flat edge and that's usually what most LEDs have. But the shortcut version is when you're looking at it from the front, put the short leg in the left hole. Here you can witness one of my mini screw ups. Look, I'm putting the male SAO connector in there. Here's the first power on test of the galactic badge. And as you can see here, it turned on and everything looked pretty good. Not long after this is when I realized I'd used the wrong connector because I was going to grab an SAO from last year's box and plug that in and realize the mistake I've made. So then I used some flux and some solder braid and some cursing and got that connector out. Used a little more braid to clean things up a little bit more. And then I soldered in the right female connector. Did a bit of cleanup. And then a basic test to make sure it still worked. I don't think I tried one of my old SAOs at this point. I just went ahead and started working on this one. On this one, we use the five millimeter frosted LEDs. And from the point of view of the front of the SAO, we want to put the short leg or the negative to the left. Here's my next screw up. As you notice, I've got the male connector here, but it's pointed toward the front of the SAO and not the rear. I just continue building away, totally oblivious, until I get ready to test it, that is. And this is when I realize what I've done. Bad gum it. So out it comes. And now back in the correct way with the notch or pin pointing up. And look, it works. It also gave me a chance to test the SAO port on the alien robot badge. These next two SAOs just use these header pins instead of a special connector and we have to break those off as directed to get those ready. The next one's going to be this all your base one and we are going to use these five millimeter frosted LEDs on this one as well. The negative or short lead goes up on these. I'm coming back after the fact to stick this warning in here. Notice how these are like surface mount and not through hole connections with the SAO and you just got these headers here. So you wanna make sure you do a good job soldering, but also no matter how great of a job you do soldering, if these are super tight and they usually are when it's like new, they will rip the traces right off of that SAO. So keep that in mind when you're removing or pulling these back out of a badge you've got them sticking on. If it feels like it's not coming, you may want to reach in there and actually get a hold of the connector itself and pull instead of pulling the board off of the connector accidentally. You can try working these header pins in and out several times of the sockets that are on the main badges. That might loosen things up just a tad, so it's not so tight, but just wanted you to be aware. I gave this one a quick test and it looks good. Next was the freaking Clouds SAO, and it was just more of the same, except this time we used a red LED and the negative goes in the left side again from the point of view of looking at the front of the SAO. This one looked good to go as well. And that is a freaky looking clown, but it looks pretty awesome. Then I just did a bit of cleanup on all of these.
All right, last but not least, we've got the High Roller Con Bleed Out badge here. And as you can see, failed you all yet again. I didn't record when I was getting the LEDs in here or that resistor. I just uh, either hit it twice or something. I had trouble with OBS, but I am putting this RGB uh, flashing LED in here. And you kind of leave it long so you can bend it over so it'll kind of shine through that piece of the PCB there that's like a window. And just uh, soldered that in. And then put the through hole connector on here with it facing backwards instead of frontwards like I've done all these other times. Soldered that in, did some cleanup, then gave it a test. It looks like we're gonna have ourselves another giveaway. The nice folks at Hacker Boxes have graciously offered to send a Hacker Box 104 to a randomly picked commenter. We'll be picking the comment on July 19th. And remember, Hacker Boxes only ships to US addresses for this giveaway. So if your comment's picked, but you don't have a US shipping address that we can use, we'll need to pick someone else. Good luck. As of the time of this recording, there are still Hacker Box 104s in stock. If you don't win the giveaway, you want to get one, check them out or go ahead and subscribe. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.